Hey friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And for those of you who are new here, my name's Amy. I'm a full-time reseller, primarily on the Poshmark app, but I do dabble in other online platforms and I sell locally. Today, I'll be doing a ship with me video. And in these videos, I go day to day. Usually there's three separate clips and I share with you the items that have sold. I talk about how much they sold for, what I paid for them and what my profit is. So uh, as you can see, it was a really great weekend. It was a three day weekend. So I have 12 items to ship out. I'm pretty excited. So let's get started. The first item actually sold on Cherish. And let's see if you can see these. It's a set of eight vintage Libby drinking glasses and they're in the original box. Now I have had these in my inventory for a long, long time. I mean, years and I just recently listed them online uh, maybe a month or two ago, and they sold for full price for $144. Woohoo! I'm so excited. So again, for those of you who are new here, I also sell locally and I have a small shop. So that's why you may hear that me say I've had things in my inventory and haven't listed them online, but I'm working really hard this year to get everything online, uh, especially my hard goods. So like I said, these sold for $144. I paid 10 for them. Cherish charges a 22% commission. So after their fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $105.62. I love big profits. You guys all know that. I'm gonna go ahead and package these up off camera because they'll take a long time to package. So we will get those out of the way. And the next, or all the rest of the items sold on Poshmark. And the first item is this leather rock wide corset waist belt and it has these beautiful rhinestones really nice quality leather here is the marking i had never heard of this brand before but i saw it at the thrift store and i couldn't resist it just based on the style i did pay up for this i paid nine dollars which normally I like to spend less than $5. Typically, I like to keep my belts at $3. But I just couldn't resist this because it was such a beautiful piece and beautiful quality. So I am wrapping the buckle in bubble wrap just because I don't want any of those rhinestones to get bumped in transit and fall out. Okay, so I think I originally listed this for $69 or $65 and it sold for $58. I think this was an offer to Likers, so they probably got discounted shipping on that for that price. I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap this in tissue paper. And I'm thinking I might also wrap it in plastic, but I will do that off camera just for the sake of time. So after Poshmark fees and my cost of goods that made my profit $34.72. I think that's great. Uh, I think I had this listed for a month or two, so it wasn't a super fast sale, but also didn't take a terribly long time. And I'm not gonna complain about that profit. Okay, so another belt. For those of you who watch my videos, you know that I love selling belts. This is a Nakona Western belt with woven leather detail. This I just recently, just listed very recently and I listed it for $39 which is what I typically list my belts for it's in excellent condition as you can see it's still a little stiff it's so new this was I believe this was another offer to liker I sent out 20% off offers with discounted shipping 
on everything in my closet. Let's see, I might struggle with this a little bit, so be patient. Uh, January is typically one of my best months, so I'm kind of taking advantage or want to take advantage of people wanting to shop. So I sent out those 20% off offers to likers and I updated my Posture VA to send out when someone likes an item nine minutes after they like it they will get a 20% off offer with $5.95 shipping. I am in the mood to move out some inventory and increase my cash flow, so that is why I'm doing that. So some of these I may get a little bit less than I had originally hoped for, uh, but profit's profit, and sometimes you know you gotta uh, speed things out and you know move things out. So. This sold for $31. I paid $3 for it, so that made my profit $20.08. I'm very happy with that. I am not going to complain at all, and like I said, that sold pretty quickly. Okay, let's see if I can find the next item here. It is this vintage, I believe it's Victorian locket. And this is rolled gold and it has little gemstones in there. As you can may be able to see, it is dented and then also it does not close properly. Had it been in great condition, it would have sold for a lot more than this, uh, but I did sell it for $52. It's really a special piece, probably from the early 1900s. So hopefully this person who bought it can uh, fix it or they'll just love it and uh, wear it the way it is. It was also missing a stone. So I had picked this up for just $3. And I think, you know, the reason it was so cheap was because it was broken, I guess you could say. But I saw the value because of the age and the style. And I have sold these antique lockets for that are damaged for higher dollar amounts in the past. So I knew that I could certainly make money at $3. Okay, and also if you're new to watching my channel, I like to use these little plastic boxes. I get them in the dollar store, at the dollar store. And they're actually for food storage. Usually they are on the end caps. And I like them because you get 10 for the dollar or dollar 29, whatever it is now. Uh, so they're pretty affordable and I think people can reuse them. So like I said, this sold for $52. I paid three. So after Poshmark fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $38.60. This did take a little while uh, to sell, probably four to six months. But um, as I've said over and over again, sometimes uh, vintage and antique jewelry takes time to find the right buyer. And I'm okay waiting because it doesn't take up too much space and I don't uh, pay too much typically for my jewelry. So the next item is this vintage faux cinnabar kind of Asian style necklace. I picked this up uh when I did an estate buyout and I've got I got tons of western style items but they also had some really chunky statement necklaces like this so I picked those up too I can't remember what I originally listed this for but it sold for $39 and I think uh, it had discounted shipping I had paid $5 for it in uh, this estate buyout. It was my cost of goods averaged out to $5 per item. Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I don't have the right size box for this. Normally I like to put my jewelry in boxes, um, but I just don't have the right size. So we're just gonna wrap this up nicely 
So after Poshmark fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $23.52. This did take a while to sell, I think maybe six to eight months. So definitely not a quick flip, but I'm not too worried at all about that. So I don't know if I've mentioned this, I've mentioned about clothing before, but for jewelry, if there is no name brand, I list it under the vintage brand on Poshmark. And a lot of people follow that brand just like they would follow Coach or Louis Vuitton or whatever. And so it can help uh, your items get more exposure if they don't have a brand name or if they um, do have a brand name, but it's not an important one. Okay, so the next item that sold is this little vintage Expo 74 charm. I haven't sold a charm in a, in a while, but I like to pick up these little charms at estate sales if I uh, can get them for cheap prices. I like to keep uh, my cost of goods under $2 for these because they don't sell for a whole lot and they typically don't sell super quickly. So a lot of times I'll just buy them on a charm bracelet that's full or sometimes too I'll go in and someone will have bought all these charms and never put them on a bracelet and I can pick them up for a dollar or two and they're easy to list and store. So I think this sold for pr full price uh, for $17. I'm kind of struggling here. I cut my <laughs> ribbons too short. I'm sorry about that. Uh, and I had paid a dollar for it. So that made my profit $12.60. I don't typically make really big profits on these, um, but because you know I can buy in at a low cost of goods, and they don't take up much space, I don't mind listing them even if they're not a huge profit. And the sales for those just kind of trickle in. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll take a day and I'll list like 20 or 30 of them. Uh, so I have a lot to choose from and they're also a good bundle item. So the next item that sold is this Big Sky Montana belt buckle. And this is, by A. Desi, and it did have some damage. There's a little deer or elk here, and one of his antlers is broken off, and he has some wear to his nose. So this sold for $23. Seems like it should have sold for more than that to me, uh, but because of the damage, that's probably why it didn't sell for as much. And again, I'm sending out 20% off offers with discounted shipping so that I can move some stuff out. I had paid $3 for this. So after Poshmark fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $13.68. I do have quite a few uh, pieces of clothing coming up that I sold. I just wanted to get these pieces off of the desk first before I moved into the clothing. Did I say my profit was $13.68? And this only took a couple months to sell, not really very long at all. If you price belts and belt buckles correctly, um, you know, on the lower end, then they usually sell pretty quickly. Okay, so my, my pile was falling over there. <laughs> the first item that sold is this, is it L or Land's End jacket? And it has this faux Sherpa lining and it's faux suede. This was just in excellent condition and I thought it was so cute. And I found it at the bins. So it was really in beautiful clean condition it looked like somebody had only worn it a time or two i just gave it a nice steam to kill any germs because it wasn't technically dirty 
uh, it looked almost unworn. So this sold for forty dollars. I think that I think it sold for full price actually, uh, because I didn't price it terribly high. Because typically I don't get really high prices for Lands End. Now this buyer did message me before she purchased it and ask if it had any fragrance or laundry soap odors. So I gave it a good couple of sniffs everywhere I could and I did not smell any noticeable odors. So when people ask me about that, I'm always very appreciative and I do my due diligence to make sure that I'm sending them an, ide an item that doesn't have strong odors. Uh, because as if you see in some of the Facebook groups, sometimes buyers will buy something and then after the fact say they're very sensitive to odors and you shouldn't have washed it with, you know, a fabric softener and da, da 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 So I'm very appreciative that she asked and I wanted to make sure that she was getting an item that wouldn't bother her. So hopefully um, I can smell well enough that I didn't detect those smells. If there are any, and, but I don't smell anything. Okay, anyways, it sold for $40. I picked it up at the bins for less than $2. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $27 and 32 cents. This did take maybe two months to sell, so really not too long at all. The next item I have had for a really long time, uh, partially it's my fault because I thought it was so cool and I didn't accept a lot of the lower offers that I got and I got quite a few offers on this. So I had originally had it listed, I think as high as 129, but I had reduced it to 99 and this buyer offered me 65, which was the best offer that I had gotten and I was ready to sell it. I think that I've had this listed close to two years. So it is time to let it go. I'm not gonna wear it. So it's just this vintage, long overcoat but I really loved the tweed with the multiple pink purple blue green colors and um, there are the buttons it had an asymmetrical button up it just was really a unique piece there was no name brand in it um, but I was just charmed by it and I wasn't going to let it go for a cheap price just because I don't think people are going to find another one just like it out there. So it sold for $65. Like I said, I had paid $6 for it. I also listed this under the vintage brand because there was no name brand on it. There was also no fabric content label. This did feel like it had wool in it to me. So I always put, you know, no brand tag, no fabric content label, but feels like a wool blend. This also didn't have a size mark in it. So I put estimated as a size medium. Please refer to measurements for best fit estimation. And then I put lots of measurements in. So uh, the armpit to armpit, the length, the shoulders, the sleeve lengths. Sometimes I'll do the waist and hips, but I will always give people those measurements if they request them. So it sold for 65, I paid six. That made my profit $46. Was that worth waiting a couple of years for? Probably not, <laughs> but uh, I liked it so much that I just did not want to uh, take a low offer for it. And hey, it's my business and I so I can do that. Okay, the next item is a leather, lambskin leather. Can you guys see just how soft that is? Lambskin leather jacket. And this is just by Anna, which really normally I would not pick up this brand. 
uh, but because it was lambskin leather and it kind of looked semi-vintage, like maybe it was from the 90s or the 2000s and it was at the bins. So all of those factors, I decided to pick it up. I think I originally listed this for $59 or $69 and this buyer offered me $50. I had had this listed two or three months, so I decided that I was happy to take that $50, seeing as I paid less than $2 for it at the bins. So that made my profit which I am not going to complain about at all, especially because it was a bins find. Okay, we're getting close to the end. <laughs> well, close to the end of today. I will, uh, there will be two more clips after this showing uh, what else I sell this week. Okay, so the next item is this tribal brand jacket with this oversized red houndstooth print. I just thought this was so cute and it was new without tags. Uh, the pockets are still stitched shut and it still has the extra button uh, clipped whatever on the inside. Uh, but this took quite some time to sell, maybe a year and a half. I think I originally started listing this at $69 because Tribal can have a uh, pretty good retail value. I just have not had very good luck with getting any kind of high price on the resale market. So this buyer offered me 40 and I was ready to let this go because I had kind of thought about keeping it, but I don't really wear red. So I just decided that 40 was good. I had paid $9 for this. So that made my profit $23. Probably not the best investment of $9 I've ever made, uh, but I did end up with a profit in the end. So. You just have to live and learn each time. I probably won't pay up for tribal ever again. <laughs> okay, the next item is this vintage red down vest. And I picked this up in a free pile on the side of the road. I gave it a good washing and hung it to dry. I think this is probably from the 70s or 80s. And, um, Let's see, I can't remember what I started out listing this at. I think 46 or 47, but the buyer offered me 25. I did kind of want to get a little bit more for it than that, but like I said, I have been in the mood to move things out. I think I'm gonna need to get a new wrapper for that one that one's all ripped up but um so it was free it sold for 25 dollars. i didn't pay anything so that made my profit 20 dollars. you gotta love free and that just took a couple of months to sell so not too bad okay uh so i will be back there'll be two more clips after this so don't go anywhere i'll be back in a couple of days to share what I, else i sell if you are enjoying my videos i would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel uh, we have fun here talk about we give each other tips on uh, reselling just chat about things in the comments down below so if you could give this video a thumbs up and comment down below it i'd really appreciate both those things too and i'll see you in a couple days Hi again, it's another day and I've got a few more goodies to ship out. It hasn't been quite as busy as it was over the weekend, but as always, I'm thankful for any sales that I have. So the first item sold on Cherish. Like I said, I've really been working on listing more items on there to see if I can ramp it up and uh, sell more of my hard goods. 
So it is a pair of Jonathan Adler uh, Christmas ornaments, and these are a king and queen. I listed these very shortly before Christmas uh, because they had been sitting in my death pile and I never would end up getting them listed before Christmas. And quite a few of the items, or two of the items that I listed before Christmas didn't sell before Christmas, but they are selling in January. So that just goes to show, get your Christmas items listed no matter what time of year it is, and they will eventually sell. So those sold for $69. I paid $4 for them. Cherish has a 22% uh, seller's commission. So after their fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $49.82. I'm very happy with that. Those should be pretty easy to package up and ship off, uh, but I'm gonna do that off camera. The next item is was a very quick sale. So this sold in less than 10 minutes of listing it. And it is this vintage jacket by Walls. Now I'm sure you guys, if you're like me, you've seen this brand, let's get close, uh, when you're out at the thrift. I almost always just pass right by it. I have never looked up comps and I guess I should have. I picked this up because it has this cotton canvas that kind of looks like Carhartt. And then it had this Aztec print on the bottom. It also had this blanket lining. These are all things that are really popular and trendy with Carhartt right now. Uh, and because it was only $1.50, I picked this up. I listed it for $65. Someone offered me $58 right away, like I said. So I just decided to go ahead and take that. I was eager for a quick sale. And honestly, I really didn't know how much this would sell for. And I can't remember if I even looked up comps beforehand. When it sold so quickly, I did look up comps on this Walls brand afterwards, which don't be like me, look up comps before you list things. Uh, but this sold in the correct range according to what other items it sold for. But some of these Walls brand coats, particularly if they're the down filled coats, they can have some really great comps. So I would recommend that you, uh, you know, keep an eye out for these and look, them, look up the different styles when you're out at the thrift. So like I said, this sold for $58. I had paid only $1.50 for it. So that made my profit after posh fees and my cost of goods $45. I'm thrilled with that for a quick flip. Another item that sold pretty quickly are these um, mini Tonka kind of moccasin fringe suede boots. I picked these up because I liked that uh, kind of Aztec embroidered print and the fringe. I'm into that Western boho style. So when I see it for an affordable price, I typically pick it up regardless of the brand, unless it's super cheap. So let's see, what did I list these for? I think I listed these for $46 maybe. A buyer liked them and my Pasha VA sent them out an offer for 20% off with discounted shipping. So that was, I think $38 with discounted shipping and they counter offered me with $35. I might've been able to get a little bit more for these because this is kind of an unusual style, but they were a size six. Uh, so, I thought that might be a little bit harder to sell, so I just decided to go ahead and take that quick profit and quick flip for $35. I had also paid $1.50 for these. I got them at the same sale. So that made my profit $26.50. I'm thrilled with that for a quick flip. I don't have to store it and share it and relist it and all the stuff. So 
that is all for today, but hopefully uh, it picks back up and I'll have more sales in a couple of days. I will see you then. Hi, it's the next day and I've got a few more goodies to ship out. Normally I would have waited another day to uh, film this portion of the video, but one of the buyers requested that I ship the item ASAP and it was a great high dollar sale. So I am going to do that for them. So I am very excited about this sale. Initially, I was a little bit more excited about it than I am now uh, because I did a little bit more research after I sold it. And it seems to be <laughs> maybe kind of a common theme uh, recently that I am not looking up comps before I list things. So learn from my mistakes and uh, look up comps before you list. Okay, so we'll get to more information about that but so the first item that sold is this vintage viking glass mushroom and it is in this orange persimmon color i recently picked this up at an estate sale for five dollars and i i just think these are cool and i knew that they had some value uh, because i had looked them up in the past but i had not looked them up recently and the values have skyrocketed i mean crazy amounts so i'll just get to the punch this one sold for 174 dollars uh, but apparently the orange isn't quite as desirable as some of the other colors had i listed one of the other colors i would have undersold undersold it for $174. Can you believe that for this tiny little mushroom? So the blue and the green colors are very, very desirable. I'm seeing comps for two, three, four hundred dollars depending on the size. So keep your eyes out for these Viking glass mushrooms and be sure to look up comps before you list them. So this uh, sold on Cherish.com, uh, which I have had a couple of questions about that, and it is C-H-A-I-R-I-S-H.com. It is a curated site, so you submit your listing and they can approve or decline your listing. So uh, it's mostly for home decor and furniture. They don't take everything. It's not like eBay or Poshmark. Uh, there's also some other kind of idiosyncrasies with the, if I pronounce that right, uh, with the shipping and different things. So be sure to read all of the uh, terms and conditions before you start listing on there. They also charge a 22% commission. So this sold for $174. I am thrilled. That was for full price. I paid $5 for it. So that made my profit after fees $131.82. That is awesome. This was only listed for a week to two weeks. And uh, I, like I said, I did look up comps after this sold, which I should, I swear that I looked them up before I listed it, but I guess I didn't. Uh, because these are going for crazy amounts now. Anyways, I don't, I don't think I left much or any money on the table, so I'm not going to complain about that $131 profit. Okay, so I am going to set this to the side to finish packaging it. I just wanted to get it started so there was no chance that it could get damaged. Okay, so the next item sold on Poshmark, and it is a pair of Stio, S-T-I-O brand slacks. And these are kind of like a khaki activewear business casual pant. I had never heard of this brand before, but uh, four pairs in different colors in the same size came out on a new rack and I felt them and they just felt like nice quality. So I grabbed them because it would be, it made them easy to list. I could just copy and paste the description and change the color. So these sold for, let's see, $49. So that is great. I listed them for $55 and someone liked them. Uh, so I sent out an offer with 10% off, for 10% off with uh, $4.99 discounted shipping. 
I had paid $6 a pair for these, which was paying up a little bit. But again, I thought that it would be a easy listing. And these retailed for, I think, $125 or $145 a pair, and they were in excellent condition. So I thought it was a good risk to take. So that made my profit after fees $30.52. I'm happy with that. Uh, I wanted to talk about, I can't remember if I mentioned earlier in the week that I had set my Posture VA to send out 20% off offers to Likers uh, with $5.95 discounted shipping on every new Liker. I was kind of testing that out to see if it would boost my sell sales and I left it that way for three days. It didn't boost my sales. Maybe I needed to leave it longer, uh, but I just decided that I didn't want to leave that deep of a discount going on there so I changed it back to the 10% off. So from my quick little test it doesn't seem like uh, that instantly boosts your sales by offering higher discounts to likers immediately. Well I sent it out within nine minutes of the item being liked. Okay so that is all for today. Uh, today is Friday. I'm hoping that I will have a couple more sales to sh share with you tomorrow. Uh, so wait and see if there is a another clip. Okay, I'll see you then. Oops. Hi, it's the next day and I actually have four more things to ship out today. So I'm pretty happy about that. The first item that sold is this Michael Kors uh, New Without Tags. It is a card holder, passport holder. And I picked this up uh, last weekend and it's only been listed for a couple of days. I think I listed it originally for $45 and this buyer offered me $32. I decided to go ahead and accept that because Michael Kors is kind of hit or miss for me. Sometimes I can get decent prices for it and sometimes it sits forever. So since I got that, uh, offer so quickly, I just decided that I wanted to take it and move this out. I had only paid $1.50 for it, so that made my profit $24.10 after Poshmark fees and my cost of goods. Got a little piece of lint there. So that is really great for a quick flip. I won't complain about that at all. The next item was also a pretty quick flip. I didn't get quite as much as I anticipated for this, but I'm trying to stick to my plan to keep moving coats out. So this is a vintage L.L. Bean uh, jacket, and it had a plaid, a little bit of plaid lining in it. This is what they call a barn jacket. And sometimes this style of coat uh, vintage or new uh, can be pretty popular and you know they LL Bean made it Eddie Bauer lots of brands make this style of coat this one had the corduroy collar and it was this pretty kind of teal green color that's one of the reasons I picked it up so I listed it for over $50 and this buyer offered me $35 like I said, I had hoped to get a little bit more for it, uh, but I think that is not a terrible price at all. So I just decided to go ahead and accept it. And I had only paid $4 for it. So that still left me with a $24 profit after Poshmark fees and my cost of goods. So for something that's only been listed a week or so, I am happy with that profit for a quick flip and it won't be sitting in my inventory for a long time. So that makes me happy. How have your guys' sales been in January? I hope they've been good. Comment uh, down below and let me know if you're happy so far with your January sales. So today is January 21st. So we're getting towards the end of January now. And I recently compared, and I'm a little bit behind uh, on sales compared to last January, but still it's shaping up to be a really great month. So 
The next item that sold is this semi-vintage Orvis blazer, and this was a fishing blazer. Um, I don't know who would wear this fishing, but it has the leather elbow patches, really great details, the netting on the inside. And it's funny, I picked this up. When I bought it, I made an instant decision that I wanted it, even though it was $13. And then when I got home, I thought, why did I pay $13 for a blazer? Because, you know, blazers can sit for a little while. But this one sold pretty quickly uh, in less than a month. And it sold for $46. I think I originally listed this for $59 maybe. I sent out some more aggressive offers with discounted shipping. And this buyer accepted that $46. So... It turned out to be pretty good because after my cost of goods and posh fees, that made my profit $23.08. So maybe not really the most amazing return on investment, like paying up $13 to make $23 profit, but I am not going to complain at all. Profit is profit, as I always say and this didn't sit around for too long. So that makes me happy. Okay, the next piece that sold is pretty interesting and it did take a few months, maybe six months to sell. And it is this vintage Western set. So it has this top with fringe and there's a matching skirt. It is by Liz Parker. Now I didn't buy this for the brand. Uh, I bought it actually because the set came with a belt too that had fringe and the belt was super cool. So I sold the belt on its own and I think that ended up selling for about $40 and I paid $5 for the whole set. So um, this ended up selling for $54. So it ended up being a really great return. The skirt has the cool fringe too. And I kind of figured that this set may take a little while to sell because, you know, I figured it's gonna have to be somebody pretty specific who wants this really in your face Western look and this bright color. But overall, I am happy with uh, my profit. So I paid 250. Uh, for this when you split the you know the belt out so that made my profit $39 that's pretty great and you know six months is kind of a long time but for vintage I don't think that's too bad at all so I am happy with that what do you guys think of this would you have picked this uh, set up or is it too uh, <laughs> too loud for you. I, I really enjoy picking up Western style stuff. It just makes me smile and it has personality to me. That's just kind of, you know me, I like picking up unique style items. So that is all for this week, but I am really thrilled uh, with how it turned out. I ended up having Let's see, so my total sales for the week were $1,136. So that's a, that's a pretty great above average week. So that is all. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you are enjoying my videos, I would so love it if you would subscribe to my channel, uh, give this video a thumbs up and comment down below. Thanks again for watching. See you next week.